The link between genes and children with ADHD will be researched by a group of Australian neuroscientists. More than 600 families will be studied over the next three years in the hope that the research will provide medical practitioners with a better understanding of what causes the disorder and help them develop better treatments. Joining us on the line now is Associate Professor Mark Belgrove of the Queensland Brain Institute. Well, perhaps, uh, Professor, you better tell us first of all just what sort of evidence is there already to suggest that uh, there is a genetic link between ADHD and the patients? Uh, good afternoon, John. Um, John, there is a, a, quite a deal of uh, evidence now uh, from twin studies suggesting that ADHD has quite a strong genetic link. Uh, we know that uh, if you are the co-twin of an identical twin that has ADHD, you're at an increased uh, risk of having ADHD. We also know that if you're uh, the child of a parent who has ADHD, you're at increased risk, or the sibling of a, in a family with a child with ADHD. So there's a strong familial risk profile for ADHD. ADHD is one of these things that has sort of become known, I suppose, or perhaps been revealed or identified uh, only in recent years, the past, what, decade, two decades perhaps, I, I suppose. Uh, I mean, why has it taken so long to understand that some people do have this attention deficit disorder? Uh, sure. Um, increasing awareness has, uh, has certainly led to a greater diagnosis of ADHD, but I think it's important for your uh, viewers to understand that uh, descriptions of the disorder in the clinical literature really dated back uh, perhaps even 150 years ago when uh, people spoke of uh, the symptoms of ADHD, but it was called a different condition, for example. So uh, George um, Still, for example, wrote of a, a condition that has all the modern symptoms of ADHD and a physician, Alexander Crichton, talked about a condition which he, which he called mental restlessness, in which really all the modern symptoms of ADHD were identified. Uh, well, that's, that, that, that uh, really explains what I was going to say, that, you know, that, that suggests that it has been around and that it might well be genetic and it's been around for, uh, for generations. Yes, indeed. What sort of tests then will you perform in the study that you're going to do? Uh, we're asking uh, families uh, who have a child with ADHD uh, to volunteer to the study, John. Uh, we ask the mother, the father and the child who has ADHD all to give a sample of saliva. From that we can extract a DNA and that we can look for individual genes that might confer risk to ADHD. And what we also do is compare the DNA from children who have ADHD uh, against children who don't have a, a diagnosis of ADHD. And we can see whether certain uh, DNA changes are more frequent in kids with ADHD than in uh, children without it, for example. So you're in Queensland, of course, but uh, will the study be confined to Queensland or are you looking for families throughout Australia to take part? Yeah, this is a large study, uh, John, perhaps the largest study ever undertaken in Australia, um, where we have recruitment sites at Melbourne at the Royal Children's Hospital, uh, a site in Brisbane at the Marta Children's Hospital, and we also have collaborators at Perth at the Curtin University of Technology. Uh, and so families can uh, visit our website, which is www.adhdstudy.com.au. Well, that's fairly easy to remember, isn't it? adhdstudy.com.au, right? That's that's correct, and they'll find all the uh, relevant contact details for the, the local contacts at, at that website. And how long do you think the research is going to take? Uh, the study is funded uh, for three years, and I think uh, over the three years we probably should uh, come close to get our target of 600 families, but uh, research is ongoing, and we hope to even be able to build uh, beyond 600 families in the long term. Is it likely then that... Uh you know, if you are successful, uh, that down the track there will be some form of, uh, of, of drug perhaps developed for uh, ADHD? I mean, I assume that you can't exactly breed it out, can you? You can't presumably genetically modify it. No. Uh, I mean, there are indeed uh, treatments for ADHD at the moment, med uh, medical treatments. Um, I'm sure many of you viewers have heard of the, uh, the drug Ritalin that is used to treat ADHD. That acts on chemicals in the brain, uh, mostly a chemical called dopamine. And indeed, many of our uh, best candidates for genetic differences that we know are genes that regulate the dopamine system in the brain. So we'll be looking for uh, genetic variants within that system, but also the, you know, a whole host of other genes that can regu regulate brain function. All right. Is it possible then that you might be able to treat a, 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 a child in the womb, you know, before birth even? Is that, would that be possible? No, that, that is, that, that's unlikely at this point. I think the, best, the most likely scenario is that we can identify genes that will give us a better understanding of how 
the brain is developing in children with ADHD and, and by having a better understanding of uh, the brain and how it works in ADHD we might be better able to target drugs to particular groups of children who have a, a certain uh, symptom for example. All right, thank you very much indeed. Associate Professor Mark Belgrove from the Queensland Brain Institute and on screen there, if you uh, are interested in taking part uh, in this ADHD study or you know somebody, perhaps there's that uh, website, www.adhdstudy.com.au. Professor, thank you. Thank you very much.